All right, welcome to our short paper, Detecting Independent Pronoun Bias with Partially Synthetic Data Generation. Uh, I'm Robert Monarch. I am Alex Morrison. First, we observed the pronouns, including hers and theirs, were not identified as pronouns by every major parser for 20 years. And secondly, we observed that language models are biased towards his over hers and theirs more than can be explained by the training data alone. As you can see here, there are many pronouns in English. These are pronouns common to almost all English speakers, but there are others as well. For example, some are only used in some geographic locations like y'all, and some have been deliberately constructed by marginalized communities like Zay, used by some non-binary gender people like myself. In some cases, we use the same word for two different paradigms. For example, we use her for both object and dependent possessive, and we use his for the dependent and independent possessives. Have you ever noticed the difference between she, her, hers, he, him, his, and they, them, their, theirs before? Well, don't worry, most English speakers don't con consciously realize these differences. Even my little friend here, uh, even, <laughs> even though we must know them un unconsciously. <laughs> here, independent po possessive pronouns are especially interesting in English because they are the only pronoun that includes two long distance relationships, the possessed and the possessor. So for people who use hers, and theirs as part of their gender diversity, you know, it's important for applications to correctly identify them as pronouns in the first place. Unfortunately, for more than 20 years, every major state-of-the-art parser missed hers and theirs. There were no such error for his. We created a new data set in universal dependencies format, which has hers, his, and theirs in different syntactic configurations. Uh, since uh, this was released, all of the major syntactic parsers now recognize these pronouns, um, and any future technology built on this data set should as well. So having talked about the problem with syntactic parsers and part of speech taggers, uh, we now turn our attention to language models, uh, specifically to, to mask language models. So we are looking for the preference for his versus theirs versus hers. And we extend work by Carita et al. Uh, comparing the softmax ratios. Um, uh, we extend it in, in two important ways. Uh, they used uh, two template sentences, um, and we're using the 57 new sentences. Uh, and we have the model itself suggest the nouns um, uh, in order to avoid the situation where some of these nouns might be pathological in the, in the model. And then we compare uh, model ratios um, in the training data. Um, in, the, in the results reported here, this is in uh, uh, English uncased BERT model, um, but these apply equally to other language models uh, as well. And, and all this code is open source if you go to that URL. Um, so let's look at this in more detail. First, we mask the attributes. So instead of the car is hers, the mask is hers, or the mask is blank rather, because we don't want to bias towards any, any pronoun initially. Um, and we implement uh, Bayesian deep learning. Uh, so this is dropouts at inference time, uh, repeating the inference. Uh, and because those dropouts at inference time, it generates um, uh, different attributes. Uh, this generated 104 different attributes in total. Uh, some were concrete attributes like camera and house and world. Uh, some were abstract like night and instinct. And then we're able to uh, create thousands of combinations of uh, these different attributes and the initial sentences with uh, the pronouns in different syntactic positions. Yes. So of the 104 possessed attributes, 103 were predicted uh, to be his um, more than the other pronouns. Only one was predicted to be hers more than other pronouns, which was the attribute mom, um, and none were predicted um, as more likely to be theirs. Yes. Um. So let's look at, at some of these examples here. So these are the 104 attributes compared to the training data. Uh, the, uh, the brown bars here represent the, the ratio of the model predictions, so the softmax, in this case of the, the binary comparison, um, of his compared to hers. Um, the sentence ratios are the number of sentences containing that attribute, in other words, um, uh, indicating gender, 
um, whether that's these pronouns or words like male and female, um, uh, man and woman, etc. Um, and the possessive ratios are the number of sentences in the training data um, which contain possessive constructions. Um, so uh, to go into a concrete example, uh, if you look at baby here, which is I think the, the fifth one down on the left hand side, we can see that it is biased towards hers in the training data. Uh, so in the training data, sentences like her baby are five times more frequent than his baby. Um, however, when we're predicting sentences like the baby is his or the baby is hers, uh, the model is more than twice as likely to predict uh, the baby is his. Uh, so this uh, bias towards his in the model predictions um, uh, cannot be explained um, by the training data alone. We would expect the, the, the bias to go the other way, um, all things being equal. Um, so to investigate the bias further, we generated sentences with the pronoun unmasked to extract the attributes most associated with each pronoun. For example, city, behind us, is predicted in sentences like the city is theirs, but never in sentences like the city is hers or the city is his or any of the other 57 configurations. Despite this, the model predicts the city is his to be more likely than the city is theirs. So in conclusion, there was an additional pronoun that many state-of-the-art parsers missed, themselves. This is the only they pronoun that distinguishes singular and plural. Unfortunately, all the systems that missed themselves in 2019 still miss it today. All right, thank you. Thank you.